And welcome back to Ultimate Arms. Today we're going to be comparing the Remington 700 SPS Tactical to the Savage 110 Tactical. So both of these rifles are very comparable, but there are some big distinguishing features which might make you choose one over the other. So let's start with the price point. So the Remington 700 retails for around $1,299 Canadian or in the US for around $800. The Savage, on the other hand, is around $1,999 Canadian, or around $750 US. Now the barrels on the Savage is a 24-inch button rifle threaded barrel that's fluted, and it's made out of carbon steel. The Remington is a 22-inch carbon steel barrel with 5R rifle. Now the Remington 700 has a heavy contour barrel. In terms of the barrels, like your thicker barrel is going to be a lot better for, say, like 10 round groups versus, say, a lighter contour barrel, such as the Savage. So with more metal, it takes a lot longer to heat up, but more fluting, it's going to take less time to cool it back down. So for 10 shots, say, you know, for example, if you're doing PRS, the heavier contour barrel is going to do a lot better, but it's going to take a lot longer to cool down. Also, the Remington weighs around 7.5 pounds, where the Savage weighs around 8.9 pounds. So it's going to be a little bit heavier. Now, let's go to the range and see how these both shoot. And don't forget to like and subscribe today. <laughs> And we're back. So they're both really quite accurate rifles, but one is obviously going to be a lot better than the other. So the Remington 700 did, on average, a .817 average on six different boxes of ammunition, whereas the Savage 110 did a .886 average. So the Remington did shoot, you know, say better, but not by, by much. But I do think the best group is going to really decide which kind of rifle you're going to want, either the Remington or the Savage. So the Remington's best group was 0.221, which is incredible. While the Savage's best group, you know, that it shot in three shot groups, was a 0.769 group. That's a big difference in terms of best group. So the Remington obviously does take the cake in terms of accuracy. So has the King returned? That's the question that should be answered. And should it be enough for that reason alone? So maybe Remington has turned it around. Well, I think they've turned around at least in a couple terms, especially with their accuracy. But let's take a closer look at all the features of these two rifles. So in this video, we were actually using the Discovery EDPR 5 to 25 by 56. This is an excellent scope if you're looking for, you know, a really good quality scope while you're on a budget. So the Discovery sell for around $560 Canadian or for around $400 US. That's a really good value for a scope. It's got 10 mils per revolution, 32 mils of internal elevation adjustment, a zero stop and ED glass. So they've got everything that you're going to be looking for in a good quality, inexpensive object, especially with a lifetime warranty. I'll leave a link on where you can find one in the description box below. We're also using Sunway Photo T4040 CS hunting tripod with the SM86 saddle mount on top. Now, if you're looking for a really great carbon fiber tripod, you know, for say uh, hunting or PRS style shooting, this is going to be the one for you. They sell for around $489 MSRP or for around $779 Canadian. And I'll leave a link for that in the description box below of where you can find one with the discount code to help you out some. Next, let's talk about the actions. So both of these rifles have a 90 degree bolt throw on them, but at the same time, they're not as equal as each other by any means. Now the Remington's bolt knob, you know, they still say it's a tactical bolt knob on it, but you know, like, like to call it tactical, it's a really stumpy, short bolt knob with this little pill on the end of it. Whereas the Savages got this massive knob on the end, which is going to make it a lot easier to get, you know, say your leverage, you know, to eject the rounds with. It's, you have something really big and meaty to hang on to, which is great when you're extracting or cycling rounds. This is something that you should be looking at. 
whereas Remington 700, you know, you have this little stumpy knob. It's going to be right close to the ocular. You're going to be rubbing your thumb or banging your thumb into the scope all the time with this. Now, mind you, the Remington does cycle great um, on ejections. I had no failures to speed or with cycling rounds. You know, it works really good, just like a Remington you would expect with a Remington. Whereas with the Savage, I had no problems, you know, ejecting rounds, uh, cycling rounds in at all. It was really nice. It worked great. Now, the other thing with the Remington, it does sound a little gritty, as you can tell. Hmm. Whereas the Savage, on the other hand, a lot smoother. Not super smooth, smooth, mind you, but it is a lot smoother. So, you know, the Savage has it on that one but it's still personal preference in the end. Now you can upgrade bolt knobs on the Remington if you really want to. Uh, you can even upgrade, you know, uh, the bolt arms on the Savage if you want to, you know, but should you really, in my opinion, you shouldn't have to, you know, Remington should have something more like a Savage bolt knob, you know, a longer arm or something straight out of the factory. Now, another thing to compare is that the Savage 110 comes with a 20 MOA rail. That's really nice. Whereas the Remington 700, you're going to have to go out and buy your own rail. It doesn't come with one. And, you know, they're not cheap anymore. They can run, Jesus, right up to $70, $80 Canadian if you're looking for one. You know, like an MDT 20 MOA rail, they're not cheap anymore. It would be nice if they actually put one on their rifles. Next, let's talk about the triggers. So the Remington 700 trigger, you know, varies from between three and six pounds. And this gun is unloaded. It's really nice. Um, it's crisp. There is a little bit of um, creep in the trigger, right about there, but there's not much, but there is some, you know, it's you're kind of splitting hairs on it, but it's right there just on that point it feels you can almost feel it creeping in um, but it's still a nice trigger you know you can get a lot of different aftermarket triggers for this but should you really have to now the savage on the other hand varies between uh, 1.5 and 4 pounds right there there's you know no creep to the trigger it's nice and crisp. Um, it feels a lot better than Remington. Now you can get aftermarket triggers for the Savage. Uh, also, um, they're a little less common than the Remington's. You know, Remington, everybody makes a trigger for the Remington. You can get, it's a lot more common than say the Savage 110 itself. Now the 700 almost feels like, you know, like uh, they're putting this rifle together just so you can strip it down, you know, take off all the bits and pieces that are holding this rifle back, just so you could turn around and put everything on it that you want to put on it, which is going to add the value up even more. You know, um, yes, the stock is okay, uh, being a Hogue stock, it's got this textured on it, you know, the front of it's okay, but it's not even free floated, you know, just the weight of this barrel. Um, touches the stock itself. Did it affect the shooting when I shot it? Actually not, even though it's supposed to be a free floated barrel. You know, it's pretty plain Jane for a stock. There's not much with it. Um, the grip here, it's okay in here. Um, fatter around the base here to keep your hand in. I would have still liked to see it a little better. The texturing's not bad on this. It would have been nice to see, you know, like a cheek, adjustable cheek comb, adjustable length of pull, but you know what? It's still not bad, but you end up almost having to, you know, once you've got your scope on, you're going to end up having to put a pad or you're going to have to shoot more off your chin on this rifle. Uh, the butt pad on this is really nice and soft. You know, it comes with a couple eyelets on it. What's another real pain is it's only got this flush mount mag. Um, it's not even an AICS style mag. So this thing in the end is just a top loading rifle. You have to put your rounds in. Now when I did put rounds in, 
I did have a couple of them, you know, I had a squeaky in there to get them in. They got kind of jammed up. Um, they didn't go in super smooth. Seemed like they caught inside here a little bit. Other than that, the rifle's great. Now, the Savage on the other comes with this plastic, really stiff uh, stock on it itself. It comes with an adjustable comb height. Uh, comes with an adjustable length of pull. Uh, the butt pad on the end is, you know, it's still soft and squishy, but it does come with a 10 round AICS style mag. The mag goes in really nice and easy. A little bit of play on it. So if you're on a barricade stop and you hit it down here, does it affect it? It will grab onto it. So it would have been nice if they made this mag well, you know, just come down a little bit. Now it does come, and on top of that, the mag release is really, really quick and easy to get out. It does also come with a couple of eyelet holes on the front and back. I like these two of them on the front. They are kind of a pain, you know, nowadays. It would have been better with flush mounts on them. Um, so you'd be able to put a sling or a bipod on, on the front of it if you really like. Now, both of these rifles do have threaded muzzles. So you can put a muzzle brake, suppressor, whatever else on it. Yeah, um, I think Savage did a really nice job on this one. Also, the difference between these two rifles is the Remington is just an aluminum pillar bedded, where the Savage 110 has an aluminum mini chassis inside of it. So that's a, another thing that's a little bit different between these two rifles. So in comparison of what they're offering, the Savage is actually offering a lot more compared to the Remington 700. You know, the Remington is offering very little for what what it's costing for one of their rifles. They almost expect you to strip this rifle down, whereas the Savage, you really wouldn't have to do that at all. Next, let's talk about the aftermarket support. So they're very, very comparable in terms of, you know, the kind of things that you can get. You know, you can change out the barrels with these, you can change out the stocks for these, both of these rifles, change out the triggers. You can do a lot of things for both of these rifles. So there isn't really much difference in that term by itself. Next, let's talk about the warranty. So the Remington 700s, you know, they're post-bankruptcy. They're rifles now. There is a there is a warranty on them, but it's, it's kind of iffy about those. Whereas the Savage, if you have a problem with their rifle, you know, it's supposed to be um, original owner warranty, but if you have a problem, you can send it in and they'll basically fix it, no questions asked. So there you have it, guys. There's my comparison between the Remington 700 SPS and the Savage 110 Tactical. I think these, both of these rifles have their place for shooting. One is definitely gonna be a better shot than the other, but the other one offers a lot more for the money, especially when you're looking at price nowadays. I don't think one is better than the other in the end. I think they both have their places in the sun when it comes to these rifles. And in the end, I think it's gonna be up to the person that buys them or looks into buying one of these, which one they really want in the end. So there you have it, guys. I hope you liked the video. If you do, please hit the like button. I hope you like the channel so far. And if you do like the channel so far, please subscribe. And we'll see you next time at Ultimate Arms. Bye for now.